Welcome to Bullet Point Bulletin's weekly wrap-up for the week of, week of March 5th, 2023. Hello, I am Bruce Burke, and I am here with the Richard Blaze of FinTech, my good friend and co-host, Mr. Ted Huff of FinTech Confidential. Now I'm going to send it over to Ted, and Ted will please share with everyone what we're going to be talking about this week. So this week, we're going to be going over the $33 billion fintech giant Revolut reporting its first ever annual profit. That one's a real interesting one. The, <laughs> the gaming engine Unity has added MetaMask to its functionality, among a number of other new Web3 tools. Polygon Decentralized ID is a product powered by ZK Proofs. And last but not least... The Snoop Dogg has launched Schiller, the live streaming app where everything is shoppable. So we're going to be hitting these four stories this week. There's some really good stories and a lot of interesting things that go along behind this stuff. But Bruce, I'll let you kick off uh, the Revolut side of the house. Well, like you said, it's... <laughs> How many years you've been in business and you finally turned a profit? <laughs> uh, not, but uh, they're huge, right? They're huge. And that's the thing now. I mean, uh, companies don't have to start out like, uh, you know, some, I was talking to one of our uh, locals a couple of weeks ago, right? About fundraising and, you know, he's on a fundraising tour and all this. And he's like, well, you're probably not real familiar with the different uh, phases of, of fundraising and da, 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 da. I said, no, I'm, I'm from the day when we used to actually have to be able to have a sellable product and have profit. And, you know, we, we called it a small business back then, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's, I'm glad they're finally uh, uh, moving in the right direction. Uh, but that also says that, are they there? Have they invested everything they're going to invest in their platform? Have they, you know, have they reached a, a, a plateau or, you know, are they just, uh, it, they uh, uh, pointed at some measures, you know, they, they were being a little more conservative. They weren't, you know, uh, uh, spending freely. The, you know, they hadn't bought any uh, uh, new uh, luxury cars this month. And, uh, you know. Yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah, I, what, I, what, I, what I think is kind of funny is if you look through this and, I mean, they compete with banks like, uh, so digital banks like Wise, Monzo, Starling, as they mentioned in here. And these guys have expanded. I mean, they've expanded overseas. I mean, they're a European company. They've expanded to the U.S., Brazil, Mexico, India. And they have over 25, 25 million users worldwide. Now, something that I noticed as I was doing some additional research on this, their accounting firm, a company called BDO, said, and I don't remember the exact number, but there are some revenues that are unaccounted, that were unaccounted for where they came from. Um, or actually I should say there were profits that were unaccounted from where they came from. So they got put into the revenue bucket, um, which is one of the reasons why they were able to hit this. So um, I, I think it was like a hundred and some odd million dollars or some, some odd number. I can't remember the exact number. Um, they got put into that, but it was the only reason why they were able to hit the $33 billion profit is because of these un unidentified profits. <laughs> that Unidentified I flying objects, right? <laughs> exactly. So, I mean, I thought that was kind of cool. Um, but, I mean, they are privately held. They haven't gone public. Um, you know, they're working to get their U UK banking license they're still looking to secure some additional external funding. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that's going on here. Um, but, you know, what's really interesting is that they came to the U.S. and they they just launched their pilot program. They decided to put a pause on it because, I mean, heck, honestly, it happened right about the same time as the pandemic hit. So, I yeah. mean, smart move, putting it on hold, but they're starting to spin that thing back up. So it, it's well, they, going to uh, they were also good. in the news this week for lopping uh, five billion dollars off their valuation. Also, yeah, something that I heard last week on a panel of a bunch of PE firms and family PE firms, venture capital, family offices. I mean, there's like six of these guys up there, and and so they aren't 
really calling a down. They're they're stop, starting to stop. Excuse me. Starting yeah, it's a to long day. <laughs> yeah, oh man, yeah. Um, they've stopped calling it a down round. You know, when you when you hear about somebody raising money on an evaluation that's lower than your last one, it's typically called a down round. But what they're starting to do is they're starting to call them a new round um, because the valuations in the last couple of years have just been weird, weirdly yeah. high. They, they um, were uh, amazingly high, especially for Revolut. And I think they knocked $20 billion off not just a couple of months ago. Uh, yeah. Am I right on that? I think I, I don't remember off the top of my head, but you know their their valuation has continued to come down as they've been balancing out and and reassessing the market, uh, and that's the corrections that everybody's starting to see. And I think that's why the the investment community isn't calling it down rounds anymore. They're seeing this is a correction. It's not that the the companies aren't doing what they're supposed to. It's not that the companies aren't moving in the direction. They're not delivering on what they said they were going to deliver. It just means that the market overall has corrected. And that's why they're not really wanting to call it a down round. Um, but there's been a ton of, and I'm going to be putting out a, a podcast um, here in the next week or so, about all the investment that actually happened in February. It's a shorter month, but we still had a ton of investment. Um, and it, it's it's looking to be really, really interesting to the types of things that are getting investments into them and what their valuations are falling into. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of correction going on uh, everywhere, right? Uh, not just at Revolut, uh, right? Hmm. Uh, Revolut actually... Uh, in the article, they were given a more kudos, really, for, uh, you know, and, and saying, you know, uh, a lot of other firms really aren't doing that well in comparison, right? Even some of the, their competitors, uh, the Monzos and the Starlings and all that that you were talking about, right? Yeah. And uh, I think Monzo's getting ready to do an IPO. There's been rumblings in the channel about an IPO coming out of Monzo. Uh, but uh, I don't think they're going to do it quite yet. I think uh, I think everybody's like trying to get that momentum going again post pandemic, right? Yeah. And uh, I think they're probably going to wait to the second quarter or the third quarter of this year before they do that IPO. But there is a lot of rumblings uh, in in the in the channels about Monzo doing an IPO. Yeah, and I'm coming back to Revolut. I do not know why I'm yawning so much today, man. Um, but, you know, one of the things with Revolut is that the worst ca case scenario is that they weren't sustainable. They are. And the reality is that he says here that they don't require external funding. They're going to continue to invest in the business and building in the products, which is something you brought up. You know, are they going to continue to invest? It sure looks like they are. And, and I think, I mean, just looking at the next line down, they're, they're, they are expecting the revenues for 2022 when they finished their final books to be about 30% at about $850 million. So that to, to grow that much, grow an additional $850 million. So that's a, that's a nice, uh, nice, nice round number to grow to. I mean, the, uh, it, it's not like this company is struggling to survive. I mean, they're, they're obviously uh, pushing a lot of money and, and they're, you know, they're a bank without all the, one uh restrictions of a bank and mm -hmm. two they're a bank without all the physical uh maintenance of a bank right uh they, they don't have any physical headquarters there's no uh locations there's no branches it's all online uh that's fantastic right and and that's going to make them a lot more profitable and and as they grow uh, uh give them a leg up over a lot of other companies well, and, and at the same time, is it they're coming out with this positive news, as I have it highlighted here. Um, Klarna, the Swedish buy now, pay later fintech soft valuation plunged by 85 percent to six point seven billion dollars last year. And on Tuesday, the firm posted a record one billion dollar loss in its 2022 fiscal year. So when you have these guys coming out and talking about their successes and what they were able to do, um, that is, that is fantastic. And, and there's a, there's a lot of really cool things that are going on at this company. I'm, I'm really glad that they've been able to pull through where 
some others haven't. Yeah, it, it's uh, it, it's been a bloody last couple of months. Uh, ever since the, it seems like uh, coming off the pandemic, everybody was you know kind of you know, uh, you know, nose up, uh, kind of moving, you know, as far as like being on a boat in the water. And then uh, the Fed started, you know, ratcheting up the uh, interest rates and mm-hmm. it kind of brought the the boat down on a plane, you know, <laughs> and uh, they're, yeah, they're just not moving like they are. And, and so you got to admire anybody who can navigate those waters, right. And, and, and keep their boat, you know, at least moving and moving forward and, and uh, you know, not, uh, panicking and not uh, downward spiraling and not, uh, you know, uh, making up some whole new concept that they're going to go, mar- you know, some new tangent that they're mm-hmm. going to go marching off on that, you know, uh, other companies have done in, in, in uh, circumstances like this, right? They, you know, oh, well, we're going to go do this and that's going, you know, they're just moving forward with the same exact plans they've always done. That they are. And, you know, you're, you're, one of the things that I noticed in the stories for this week is that everybody is moving forward, right? A lot of these are positive, which, man, I, I love being able to do that. There's plenty of FUD out there already. And, you know, as I'm reading through these articles every day, um, you know, it's so hard because you're like, there's another one. There's another one. There's another one. Um, Listen, uh, you know me. I'm I'm out there and I'm read the, the news from the time I wake You know, first thing I do is reach for the phone and look look at Apple news, yeah. right. And start going and, and look at your, uh, FTC WEB three, you know, and, uh, we're, and I'm specifically choosing stories that are, uh, upward trajectory mm-hmm. and, uh, something new and something interesting. And, but I'm posting the stories about Sam being on a flip phone and I'm posting the stories about, you know, uh, this one, a bunch of AT, uh, crypto ATMs being shut down and this and that and everything yeah. else. But uh, people want to hear positive news. Uh, th- th- this industry has so much going on and there's so much garbage being spewed into the channel. It's oh nice gosh. to, uh, you know, put some fresh air out there, you know? Yeah, well, I mean, we'll, 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 I'll wrap up with with the thing that at the end here that that came to mind when you were talking about that. Um, but you know, the one thing that I, I think is really cool is that the Blockchain Founders Fund raised seventy five million dollars, and they're doing this to encourage ma- mass adoption of Web three, and and this this fund that they've raised is just it's crazy huge. Um, you know, they're they're. As we talked about earlier, the fund already uh, has invested in over 100 startups, companies that you may have already heard of, Altered State Machine, Splinterlands, Grid, Crayon, and Magna, just to name a few. And they're looking to add another 200 companies to that portfolio within the next 12 months. So yeah. I just and, and, I, and, I and some big guys threw in on this too. Uh, 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 Polygon's in on this. Uh, Andreessen Horowitz, I believe, is in on this. Uh, Sequoia's in on this. A, a lot of the big, 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 big funds are uh, 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 brought this money together. I forget who was the impetus that started the whole thing, but it's it's a it's a group of uh, companies that are about blockchain, right? And and uh, you know, and they want to move web three forward. And I think that's the greatest thing in the world. Like you're working on your uh, uh, podcast. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm working on a, uh, a longer form episode, uh, kind of, kind of an explainer, but at the same time, kind of a deep dive for people. Uh, mm-hmm. Everything you always wanted to know about web three, but were fa- afraid <laughs> to ask. <laughs> uh, kind of a play on that seventies book. Uh, 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 Philip Roth, I think wrote that one uh, back in the day. <laughs> Yeah. And, and, you know, one of the things about this investment group, I mean, they're they're looking at the non-volatile innovations, you know, cross-chain bridges, payments, remittance, lending, decentralized anonymous organizations or DAOs, as we call them, um, asset management and digital identity. So the really part that I really like about this is it's, it's not going into... Is this a security? <laughs> is this a commodity? <laughs> it's, it's not going into the SEC realm of spaces. It's actually really looking to solve real problems. Um, and, and that's one thing that makes me really happy to see that. 
the uh, the one spokesman, uh, it was the tail end of the article that I read, and I think it was the one I shared with you. Uh, he said that, you know, we are keeping abreast of, you know, the changes in the industry and what's going on. So, you know, we're covering ourselves, right, in, in relation to all that stuff, right? Uh, I forget his last – I, I want to say uh, – uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't remember the guy's name off the top of my head, but uh, it, it's almost the last paragraph of this uh, whole article. Um, boop, boop, boop. There well, it is. Yeah, just, yeah. We take necessary precautions to navigate regulatory uncertainty by staying abreast with the emerging trends in blockchain governance as they continue to evolve over time. Finally, we leverage our industry connections, including leading institutions and investors <laughs> in the space to help our portfolio companies succeed. Uh, and that's the uh, what's his name? Uh, well, he, so so it's Majav. Yeah, Majav yeah. Did it, yeah. Um, it, it, yeah, he was the spokesman, and and uh, uh, I I think that's a good thing. Ali, another Ali thing, Majav. Yeah, Majavi. And then Ali another Majavi, thing yeah. that they said that I've heard a couple of other companies said on articles that I've reported on is we're looking for. Uh, real world use cases. Mm -hmm. That that term has come up three or four times, right? In other words, don't bring your dessertly and your friendly and your you know your 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 goofy uh, apps, you know, uh, to this space. This is people that are serious, and these these are companies that have a real world use case and are, are doing enterprise business and all that sort of thing, right? Uh, that's what these companies are interested in. So they're not looking for the um, the Schillers. <laughs> I hate to say yeah. it, but the Schiller. They're, they're not looking yeah. for that. Well, I, I mean, and, and you know, you kind of look at this, and I think there are plenty of people in that space already, right? So you've got MetaMask, who, who has been added to the gaming engine Unity recently, uh, among a number of other web tools. And they're real, they, and Unity also created this decentralization category page too. So in their asset store and, and they've got 13 vetted crypto pro platforms. I think if you uh, uh, go to like, who's the number one engine, I think Unreal is the number one engine for game creation. Uh, and I think Unity is like number two, right? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And the fact that they're, they made a category, right? They added MetaMask. They added uh, a couple of other blockchains into their thing. And they essentially what they're doing Tezos, is they're providing yeah. a, a platform for developers to integrate these Web3 tools, despite what the gaming industry, despite what you keep hearing in the news stories, that gamers are rejecting NFTs and gamers are rejecting tokens and all this crap. Uh, let me tell you, every game... Every player, they're buying a new shield, they're buying a new sword, they're getting a mm -hmm. new car, they're clothing their character, they're putting a hat on him, whatever. That's an NFT, that's a token. I don't care what yeah, you say. Well, and I think I think that's part of the issue, right? Is that where we've we've got we've we've had this discussion before, but you know, when you call it an NFT, people are like, yeah, I don't I don't want to deal with that. But if it's something you can collect, you can buy, you can share. It's like where 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 do I give you my money? Yeah, shut right? up and take so, my money. I need another sword. I'm 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 dying fighting the boss, and I need some more life. Where's my NFT? Right, you know. Right. <laughs> it it it's. I think it's really in. Uh, so, giving them Web three without them knowing it's Web three. You know what right. I mean? Kind of. Well, and if you and if you come back to it, and in this article, it also talks about DAP Radar reported that gamers made up nearly 48% of all blockchain activity in January of 2023. So that, that you know, and there, there are a number of other items that I've heard talked about where, you know, the artists are starting to say, hey, we're not going to do NFTs anymore because our royalties are disappearing. Well, I hate to say this, but like, if, if you aren't writing good, smart contracts, that shit will happen. You, yeah. you will lose money if you're not writing strong contracts. And I think that's the place where we're at today is you've got, you've got those who are technically adept in writing the contracts, and then you have the artists. And you haven't really seen a, a really simple way 
to bring the the contract development to the NFT that isn't in a centralized manner that has a propensity to to not de deliver on expectations. Listen, uh, one of the biggest in the business, Coinbase, they launched their NFT marketplace, what, uh, I'm going to say six months ago, uh, cause mm -hmm. I think that was about the first time I heard about it. And they say, even though they haven't gotten like great uptake on it so far, they're continuing the, the, the push. They see the future in it. They see, you know, they, they think there's, and I think there's great, uh, potential in it. I, uh, I think that the music industry, the fashion industry, the art industry, you know, high end, all these high ends and, and the luxury goods, you know, uh, yeah. you know, your uh, Louis Vuittons and your uh, Gavinci's and that sort of thing are, are, are going to adopt this stuff. And then it will, in the words of Ronald Reagan, trickle down to the mainstream, you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, and I, I think, I think the thing, expectations initially were set just out of control. Oh yeah. And if you just look like at, everything I mean, else, right. All the web three stuff in, expectations were set out of control. And now we're getting to a point where we're having the correction, where the correct level of expectation is starting to be delivered. And yeah, it's going to frustrate a lot of people. It's going to make a lot of people mad. I mean, like you mentioned, Coinbase, they announced their, their wait list for the NFT platform in October of last year. And they officially launched it into a beta. April. Oh, sorry. That was that was actually the wait list was October 2021. They launched it into beta in April of 2022, and then it, and then in their their Q3 uh, earnings call, they said that they weren't getting the amount of uplift that was expected but based upon the economic environment that it was doing better than others. Uh, so I think that was really, really nice to see. Well, you got Blur and OpenSea going at each other uh, in a uh, fork and knife every day too, right? And and there's a big battle going on over there. So, you know. Uh, Dude, uh, I'm telling you, those, those two, like, I think they're <laughs> looking for who can find the biggest – thing to beat the other one up man it's, it's, it's <laughs> well blur's just throwing all those freebie tokens out there too to all the people right and they're like but again the, the problem is throw too many out there and then they start to lose value right it, it's yeah. uh it, it's it's interesting watching this stuff uh from the perspective of the dynamics of it, right? Not just the stories themselves and the people and the money and all that, but the dynamics as, you know, companies swell and, and deflate and, you know, rise and fall. And, and the dynamics of the market to me is, is, uh, it's, it's really interesting. And, you know, we talk about it kind of, oh, this company lost, you know, $25 billion off their valuation. We talk about it very lightly, but those things to investors mean a lot, you know? Uh, yeah. And it, it's, yeah, it's difficult. I, I, it, it is. It is. Um, but, you know, you, the, a lot of the things uh, that are going on, the the reason why you see the constant ebb and flow is because we're watching it so closely. Number one, we know very seldom do people watch the in, individual stocks in the stock market at a broad level that we're talking about here. And then, and then you get into it also is that this is one of the first times that retail investors can actually control the movement, the up, the down of, of the market. And I don't think people realize that without extremely large institutional investors that make up for 90% of it, you're going to see greater swings. Whereas now it's, it's small, you know, it's, I, I don't know the exact number, but I'm guessing it's less than 50 percent is is done by by large investors or whales of that sort. Yeah, um, I was reading an article yesterday about, uh, a, a, you know, Web3 and where it's going. And they were talking about a, a project called The Gimmicks that was a NFT TV web show kind of a thing. Right. And how involved the audience got in it and the fact that the audience um because they're steering the plot and steering the characters through a DAO, 
right? And, mm-hmm. and you know, uh, putting their money up to essentially manipulate the characters through their uh, environment. Uh, it had the uh, – each person was watching – one of the shows like 40 times something that you would never see on a regular Mm -hmm. TV show that's being broadcast from ABC, CBS, NBC, right? They're essentially spending 40 hours on one episode. These people are. Uh, So it's, it's right at the, the, uh, the razor's edge between gaming and um, collectibles, right? Yeah. It's right on that razor's edge, and and uh, but the people that are participating are really participating. They're not casually participating. They're in it, right? And they're they're working it, and, and it's really interesting to uh, to read about all this stuff. So I'm going to switch over to our next topic, um, but you know we talked about the Blockchain Founders Fund and raising things, and they'd mentioned around identification or ID or digital IDs, right? Um, And one of our stories today is about Polygon launching their decentralized ID product powered by ZK Proofs. Um, You know, I, I, this is one of the items that you and I have talked about a number of times that I think is a really big opportunity for blockchain, Uh, not, not just, not crypto per se, but the blockchain itself lends it, I mean, it, it, it makes it so much easier once you've I- created that identity that's been validated um, across the he, nodes. I, I think it's good. I, I, uh, he, he seemed to think, uh, uh, I'm not thinking of the guy's name here who I, uh, is quoted in the article, but uh, the, 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 the guy from Polygon, uh, Schwartz is his last name. Um, uh, but he, he's saying that, this is going to go mainstream, right? This is going to make it easy enough where everybody can go mainstream with it and they can uh, do it. And it's got a bunch of different moving parts essentially to it that actually makes it work. But uh, zero knowledge uh, sovereign identity was something that uh, Merrick was talking about all the way back at the hashtag uh, pay show in in Mm -hmm. August 2019, right? He brought the girl from sovereign and that's, Right along the line of it, it's the same concept. It's the same. Uh, it, it's just that they're doing it where it's scalable and it's easy to get on it. Yeah. Well, I mean, like if you look here the, in this article, and I'll, I'll read it out loud. We've got a. If you're listening, we've got this on the YouTube video, and there is a picture here that shows the identity holder, subject of trust, the verifier, the consumer of trust, and the source of trust which is the issuer and that whole circle that comes into play. But then also this is the piece that I think is really cool is that that real world level of trust comes into play. Users will be able to produce zero knowledge proofs using off chain credentials, such as their passport, national ID, a bachelor's degree, and they will use that to interact with contracts and verify information on chain. And and also some biometrics and and other you know that, that sort of thing too that you know you'll find in you know most of your phone payment stuff right uh, yeah all that stuff's included uh, if you could scroll uh, back just above the uh, uh, illustration there it kind of lists right there stop 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 you went too far a little bit more. That way, there you go. Uh, the public release uh, includes four tools that makes this all happen together. There's a verifier SDK, software development kit, right? There's a user node. There's a wallet software development kit. And then there's the wallet app, right? So all these things are working in conjunction like four watch gears, right, in order mm-hmm. to make all this happen. And a lot of it is uh, – so this week, just in a couple news stories – a lot of new tools being given to developers to easily incorporate web three into whatever they're doing. Yeah. Well, and it's nice, nice that it's getting and it's leveraging the ETH, uh, the ETH network for that. And with it being based on Ethereum, it's going to be able to scale quickly. I mean, there, I can't imagine how many side chains you'll be able to link into um, app specific idea items. 
any sort of hybrids between stuff, but that zero knowledge for a layer two is so nice to see. Uh, I, I I wish that uh, Polygon was uh, 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 doing an IPO. I'd be the first one in line to <laughs> <laughs> buy a piece of that. I'd, I'd like to get 1% of Polygon right now because it's going to be huge. It, it It's going to be huge. Almost every week I'm doing a story about that company. And they're well, making a yeah. move almost every week in one way, shape, or form or another, right? I mean, it's. Well, I like the idea. I mean, the, everybody's going to laugh, but the reason why I have an Apple Watch is because it allows me to log into my MacBook without having to type a password. I know it sounds silly, <laughs> but but here's the thing. Is, and you can log into the Apple Watch with your Apple phone, right? You just put the watch exactly. on and you look at your phone and it's like, oh, you got exactly. the watch and the phone. Oh, yeah, here you but, go. Right? But the reason why I bring that up is because the whole idea around this is to make it passwordless logins in exchange for a verifiable credential by scanning a QR code or connecting desktop wallet. So I've got, I'm thinking about it this way. So I can log into sites using my watch, using the, the passwords. So now if inside of my Apple wallet, I've got this and I'm able to do that. Now I'm able to, bank i'm able to buy things i mean like there's so many things that i can do that require verification and validation of who i am and i, I just i think that is going to be really really cool a big part of apple's uh thing moving forward and, and your new watch has it the not all watches have it but the the uh i think from the series seven up they put the u1 uh, ultra wideband chip in in the apple mm -hmm. watches so it's not so much uh for find me uh even though you know it obviously makes it easy to find your watch in the in between the couch cushions right uh it's more for proximity where the devices all know where each other are yep uh, and, and how close they are to each other. And so if you get your phone in one hand and you got your watch on the other wrist, right, it knows it's, you know, right here. And so it's easy to unlock, you know, either one of those devices. And if you're sitting right in front of MacBook there and, you know, it's like, oh, okay, well, we got the Holy Trinity going right here with Ted and, uh, you know, <laughs> let him in and let yeah, him spend kind, for yeah, God's kinda. sakes. <laughs> you got the purple? What do you got? The white? You got the white one, no, don't you? Silver. I, got, I, got the, I, I actually got the gold one. Oh, you got the gold one. Okay. Yeah. I, I mean, I've yeah. always been the black and the silver, and I did the dark green one. Uh, and I was like, you know what? I'm going to go with something a little different. Sunset Yellow coming out this week. They're yeah. Gonna they're they're, they're going to do their spring release. It's going to be Sunset Yellow on the Pro, and it's going to be like a, a pastel kind of a yellow on the, uh, on the you know, standard. So we're going to go off on a different tangent. I yeah, decided sorry. that they're actually bringing in a real like dark red, possibly for the for the next version of the iPhone. That'd be nice. Um, that'll be like like a really deep red. So that's going to be kind of cool if it actually happens. There's so many rumors about that stuff, but I wish um, they'd I come back with a, a jet black one like the uh, Seven Plus. That 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 was a gorgeous phone. That enamel finish they had on that that thing was just gorgeous. That yeah, that that was a pretty phone. You know anyway. what's funny is that my favorite phone style is is this. So when they oh, launched yeah. when they launched the the four, it was basically this style. I mean, oh, we went yeah. retro with this style, except and for the big ass camera bumps on the back. <laughs> yeah, that's only going to get worse, <laughs> man. <laughs> Periscope get... on the fifteen. Periscope's coming. The, 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 those things like that's like a cooktop on the back here. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Moving okay, on. So, moving on. <laughs> moving on. So hey, our last story for today. Um, you know, this this guy is in everything. And I'm telling you, this guy, Mr. Snoop D O Double G is with the B R U C E. <laughs> you know, I, I'm I'm telling you though, but he like he you know, the other the other artist that just in a different way, but still just amazes me as well. I am right. So Snoop goes after a lot of the, the trendy, more hip, more fun type stuff. That's his personality style. Right. Yeah. And then you got, and then you got 
Will I Am, both both so cowboys, by the way, um, you know that that goes down the route of like more of community development and community growth and things like that um, to give back, you know, to his communities. And I'm not saying that Snoop doesn't do that because he does. I mean, man, have you seen some of the his son's baseball uh, football teams and he coaches, you know, football league and all that fun stuff too. But I just think it's cool. I mean, he, he embraces, um, I don't know if you want to call it the dark side of, of things, but you know, all the vices, he, he embraces them. He talks about them. He doesn't hide them. Uh, unbelievable, unbelievably authentic. And when his son told him about NFTs, he's like, all right, let's do it. Yeah. And yeah. he got into that. That, that was the he, impetus for the whole thing, right? I mean, uh, he released his last album, not uh, th- this new stuff that's coming out, but he released his last album and did a whole NFT thing behind it. Yeah. Of course, there was rarities and different levels, right? There always is. And But uh, in 24 hours, sold uh, $2.6 million worth of NFT songs. Yeah. <laughs> and albums, right? Uh, very quickly, very quickly. And he trades himself. He goes, uh, for a long time, he was on Twitter as Cosmo Steve, blah, 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 the, I, I forget the name, but right. And, and nobody knew it was Snoop and he was on there, you know, trading and doing the GM and all this stuff every day. And, you know, uh, very, uh, really took it up probably more than any other musician. But this mm-hmm. thing that he's starting with this, uh, uh, with this five odd commerce, right? The, the platform, um, is really, really something. It's a whole new platform where creators can go on and they can do live video. Uh, they can do uh, streaming audio. They can apparently uh, uh, upload recorded video also, right? And they can token gate uh, access to music, art, songs, uh, people themselves, right? Uh, you know, allow access to themselves if they're, you know, a big star. And, you know, Snoop has a gallery of homies, right, that he's bringing in, you know, to, and they'll all be on this platform, right? And, and they're all going to be, you know, releasing songs and, and, you know, doing live, live chats yeah. and AMAs and all that stuff. And it, it this thing is going to explode with somebody like him behind it. The, the, this uh, Schiller, and I love the name, right? <laughs> it's because, like, that's what everybody's doing out there, right? So it's like, hey, if you're a Schiller, hop on, you know, and, and you can yeah. you, You'll be able to issue NFTs. You'll be able to uh, uh, token gate your content. You'll be able to, uh, you know, engage an audience and and share with them and chat with them and everything right there. I mean, it's a little different than YouTube, right? And it's a little different than all the Instagram stuff and all that stuff that's out there too. It's it's, um, and it's not just for the pros. It's not just for, you know, Snoop and, and his guys. And, and he's working with this, uh, uh, what's his name? Sam Jones from Sam over there Jones, in the UK, yeah. who's done so many projects and so many things. And uh, Sam's actually the guy behind the, the, the platform. He's the one that developed the platform. Snoop is just the celebrity that's uh, utilizing it and you know, taking it to the people also at the same time. Right. And, and, uh, you know, bringing people into it. it. It's, it's to me exactly what needs to happen. Well, they've been working on it for three, three years, I think is what it was. Um, and, and one of the things that I wanted to, to point out here is McKenzie has talked about the gross merchandise volume off of social commerce to surpass four hundred billion dollars this year. Now, here's here's what's really interesting is that I I was I was on a panel and we were talking about what is it that's holding the U.S. specifically back from blowing that number out of the water. And there are two things. Um, actually, one major thing is trust. Trust that the product you're buying is what you're going to actually get. That the person that you're buying it from is who they say they are. 
And so when you start to go into this and you go into the zero trust area that we talked about with blockchain and NFTs and all this other stuff, you've just solved for those two big issues. I don't know if you are who you say you really are, and I don't know if I'm going to get what you say I'm going to get. And when you come into a platform like this, that's a big deal. And there are a number of other platforms out there that are really doing well, but your traditional social media channels are not going to do nearly as well as a, as a company like this that is focused in on a community. And I think that's going to be the big thing is this is going to be a community and this is not going to be the only one. There are going to be yeah, many uh, others. Actually, this uh, uh, Fibot Commerce platform is a white label. And uh, there, uh, there's another brand that's launching at the same time. They're not as big as Snoop, and they're not calling it Shilly. They're calling it something uh, completely different. It's uh, You can find it on their website. But you're talking about uh, Sam Jones. Uh, Sam Jones was behind Wish.com. He started Wish. Mm-hmm. Right. And you're talking yep. about not getting what you think you ordered. <laughs> For real. Wish is like, that's like Wish Central, man. <laughs> you know, so maybe you wish it was really what it was. You really yeah. wish that the thing you got was what you ordered. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. Because it probably wasn't. <laughs> it, was, it was badly spelled and it, they included every possible thing that you could possibly be looking for in the title of the damn thing. You know, <laughs> gaming console platform, uh, N64, PlayStation, <laughs> you know, all in the title. But anyway, yeah. but Sam is. Uh, nobody, uh, there's no flies on Sam uh, uh, with this Fibot Commerce. He knows exactly what he's doing, you know? Yeah. And, and you know, there's a project that I'm working on um, that is a video commerce solution um, similar to this, but, but designed differently. Um, it's designed for local businesses. It's designed for very specific communities um, to be able to basically give you an educational content be able and to be able to buy the product or service after watching the content or during watching it. And there's a bunch of other things that are going on in that. And it just, when you build that trust, it's going to work and it's going to happen. So, and that's the thing, that's the thing, being able to buy it in the moment, right. Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, what, uh, you know, in the, in the gaming sense, you're buying the health, you know, when, when you're about to die. Right. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, When you're talking about, consumer products, you know, uh, tangible goods, right? And not everything in Schiller will be tangible goods, but I'm sure they'll be No, merch, they're going to have know? virtual gifts. They're going to have where you can buy emojis, um, buy some additional chats with people, voting games. I mean, a whole bunch of stuff that are going to be throwing in there, right? Yeah, but but I'm sure there'll be physical merch too, you know, and and yeah. uh, as well as virtual merch for your uh, avatars, right? You you'll be able to up your avatars and add another uh, trait to them or something like that, you know. That that's uh, seems to be a, a growing thing. Uh, it's interesting to watch it all going from uh, tokens and ICOs and all that, and now. Like you said, it, 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 the market's kind of correcting itself, right? And now it's all going in this direction of this social commerce stuff, right? The, again, back to the concept of social mobile payments, right? Uh, <laughs> from years ago, right? Uh, it, it, it's really something. That, and uh, the fact that it's Instagram-like, right, uh, is very interesting. Yeah, I you know, I'm I'm we we reviewed and talked about another product uh, a few weeks ago that was around the same si- style, uh, looked very similar. The difference is that this one's dark screen, whereas the other one was light screen. It's kind of funny that that's the variation between <laughs> them all. Um, but I mean, the layout's the same. The looks the same. The, the things you can buy are the same. The ability to share it out to the traditional networks is the same. Um, you know, there's there's just some really, really cool stuff that's going on in this. Um, so I'm looking forward to seeing what they actually pull out of this. Well, like, got, by the, by I the mean, way, I, 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 I submitted the request to become a shiller. Um, <laughs> well, we'll see what happens. You and me both, because this whole concept that I've had forever of, uh, uh building a, a conference and being able to offer an NFT as the token that you have to get uh, and you'll join the conference a year down, you know, you'll be at the conference a year down, like Gary V's V friends, right? That, that same yeah. concept can be done right here. 
I don't have to do anything. It's all right there. I can build my own community. I can uh, set up the NFTs. I can token gate the event. I can, you know, uh, give them access to the Discord. I can, you know, da, 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 and engage them all the time. And uh, so, yeah, uh, there is a uh, hashtag pay uh, uh, Schiller application out there. Uh, if, if you're listening, Snoop. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Well, man, I mean, we just hit on four really big, really big stories for this week. I, I think, you know, it was really nice to not be talking about a lot of the regulatory stuff, not about all that fun stuff. It was, it's really nice to get into more of the artistic and the growth of the communities piece of it. And, and Bruce, I appreciate your hard work and, and really pulling these stories together and making sure they're on a positive note. Uh, this has been fantastic this week, man. Yeah, it's uh, it's not. Sometimes you got to dig, right? Uh, you really do. Uh, sometimes you got to dig to find uh, something that's uplifting and positive, you know, because there is a lot of noise out there still. There's still a lot of fallout coming out of you know FTX and everything else, uh, but there is a lot of good stuff coming, and it's coming in this form. It's coming yep. as games. It's coming as music. It's coming as art. It's coming as fashion. It's it's uh, it it's uh, it's going to change the way Hollywood does movies. It's going to change the way designers do fashion. It's going to change the way artists do music. It's going to change the way that uh, illustrators do cartoons. Uh, everything is that. And it's good. And, and game companies, it's going to change how game companies think about games and how gamers think about games, right? Because there's so many, there's even, uh, you know, play, play to earn now, right? Uh, Madden's NFL never let you earn a damn dime, right? Let you spend no. plenty, right? But you never earned a dime, uh, you know, no matter how many uh, successful touchdowns you threw, right? Uh, you didn't earn nothing. Uh, you know, and the video game, and I, you and I have talked about this, right? Uh, I I haven't been a huge video game fan uh, because just like you were saying, I, I felt like I was just spending time with something else and not really, I don't know. It's just it's something you weren't accomplishing anything. I remember the last no. game I played on Facebook was Mafia Wars. And I was like, this is so redundant, right? It's just over and over. I'm just doing this, doing that, doing this, and I get things, and I get, grow bigger. And it's like, why am I doing this? It, 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 it's no fun whatsoever. But this stuff, I mean, this is interesting. This is fun. This is exciting stuff. And and uh, it, uh, I've even uh, I downloaded uh, Mario Kart from uh, Apple Arcade, and I've been playing Mario Kart on uh, on my funny. iPhone. Uh, you can't get it on the on the arcade on Apple TV. You can't play it there, but you can play it on your phone. And uh, let me tell you, I, I, uh, coming out of the gate, I, uh, second and first place every time, baby. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> oh my gosh! Throwing uh, bananas I, behind me. Throwing bananas behind me. <laughs> spin us out. Spin us out. All right. Well, as you've thrown the banana behind you, let's spin us out of here. Okay. Uh, what do we got? What do we got? To, What's what's Bruce working on, and and what should we be thinking about uh, for next week? We should be thinking about for next week. If you are a thought leader in fintech, Web three, blockchain, AI, and all that other sorted stuff that kind of hangs around the fringe of that, if you're one of those kind of folks, uh, please contact me about the uh, being set up for your hashtag pay interview. Uh, started working on a, uh, a site. We're building out the site. We're building out the studio. We're building out the, uh, uh, all the marketing and the rhetoric and the, all that stuff. So if you're, if you're, uh, a thought leader, if you got a new product, you're releasing a book, you're, uh, uh, trying to you know you're kind of you kind of reinvented your uh, thing and you're you're going back out there you know as you should every couple of years uh, uh you know get, get on and 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 uh you know do a long form uh interview and have a chance to really 
describe and, and uh, you know, tell people about your brand and your products and your creations and your perspectives. Uh, so that's my big thing I'm, I'm going on. And uh, as I said, I'm working on uh, uh, a script right now. It's in script form, uh, kind of a intro to Web3 as well as a kind of a deeper dive as to how – what, where, why, when, you know, uh, you know, it, it kind of a, a, a deeper investigation beyond like where we're going here. Right. Uh, just a little bit deeper, you know, maybe another uh, fathom or so. And Bruce, if they want to learn more about it, like, is there, oh, do they oh, email uh, you? Well, How do they get right now? I have right now, we're, we're not going to announce the web address yet because <laughs> boy, it looks <laughs> awful. <laughs> boy, it looks awful, but it will look great in a couple of weeks here. Uh, but, uh, you can reach me at Bruce at, uh, uh, Bruce at Gmail. And if I say, uh, the email address, I'm giving away the URL, aren't I? So <laughs> I'm not doing that. Uh, but, uh, I, I'm on Twitter. I'm on Facebook. I'm on LinkedIn. I'm on Insta. It's Bruce Q Burke on almost every one of them. I'm Bruce Burke here on uh, YouTube. Uh, reach out. And please, folks, subscribe, like, share, follow. You know, uh, I, I, I really would like to get more subscribers. I'm, I'm starting a campaign this week to push to get more subscribers. Uh, it, it's, it's starting to get rewarding. People are starting to follow. People are starting to, uh, you know, listen and look. And, and, uh, I want to further that. And so if, if you're, even remotely interested in any of this stuff, please uh, give us subscribe, give us a follow, give us a like, subscribe to me, subscribe to Ted, bullet point bulletins, pay interviews, all that stuff. On to you, Ted. Please tell us uh, where you're going this week. You're the traveling uh, dude. I'm, I'm the guy uh, at dude, home I, I, Believe it or not, I'm, I'm actually going to be hanging around here in the studio for the next couple, well, this week. <laughs> I was thinking it's a couple <laughs> weeks, but it's only this week. Um, you know, this week I'm, I'm hanging out here in the, in the studio, getting a whole bunch of stuff done. Uh, next week, uh, somebody might be able to find me in Las Vegas, Nevada. So if you want to get together, just hit me up. You can reach me at, uh, hello at fintechconfidential.com, uh, ftconfidential, uh, at Twitter, uh, fintech confidential on everywhere else. If you want to reach out to me directly, you can find me at Ted, T E D D H U F F. Man, I tell you, if you do a search, you're going to find me. The WhatsApp, the telegrams, all of that fun stuff. I'm out there. You can find me. Um, but I'll be doing that, uh, next week. And then the week after that, I turn right back around and I head back to Las Vegas, Nevada for fintech meetup. Uh, it is going to be great. One of the great things that I like about the fintech meetup. It's lots and lots and lots and lots of one-on-one -on -one contact. It's kind of like speed dating for fintech. And you get to talk to a lot of really interesting people, products, companies. Um, I'm really excited because we're going to be talk talking to, um, I'm going there as media, as fintech confidential. And I'll be talking to lots of startups, lots of banks, just all over the place. Um, I'm still trying to decide how I'm going to do it. I don't know if I'm going to do video, if I'm just going to do audio. It, you know, I'm just trying to figure out what my, what my kit's going to be. Um, so, you know, I, we'll figure that stuff out as we go along. Uh, but after that, I mean, we just, we're launching podcasts. We're launching videos, uh, really, really putting out a lot of content. You're going to see a lot of shorts from us, just kind of getting you to understand the, all the interviews that we've done. So, man, it's, it's been really, really good. And of course, everybody take a look at the Telegram channel. I mean, Bruce talked about it. Uh, it's web three with FTC by FinTech confidential. And really it's, it's your, it's your newsfeed, man. It gives you everything going on in web three, um, without all the repetition, we take care of cutting out all the repetition. So you don't have to see it in multiple places and you can find it at web three with FTC. Great, great. And, and, uh, most of the stories on there, you don't have to have a, a subscription to all the paywalls of the Frommers and the Barons and the Wall Street journals and all that. This is, uh, uh, publications that you don't have to, uh, uh scale a paywall in order to uh, read the content. So that, that's the, that's the good things, right? Um, it, I, one of the I, other things we've, hey, Bruce, just going under that, one of the things that we've done here recently is we've started extracting the content out of out of the article and presenting it because we were running into situations where 
it was it was a, a behind a paywall. Now we're not delivering it for free of charge. We're not plagiarizing, <laughs> uh, but what we're doing is that we're we're giving you a little bit of our summarization on on what that story was about. So you you get an understanding, and and that way you don't have to worry about paywalls. Yeah, and and uh, I. I Although I was, you know, talking earlier about, to- I don't want to get off into a tangent. I was talking earlier about token gating and all that stuff. Uh, I think there's a necessity for that for some publications now, as nobody's buying their physical publication. I, I think it's, you know, a, a survival mechanism in a lot of cases, mm-hmm. right? Uh, it's just like you subscribe to the physical newspaper. Now you're subscribing to the digital newspaper, right? Uh, but um, I think there's even going to be, uh, like there's play to earn. I think there's going to be like uh, uh, learn to earn uh, 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 instead of like a well, paywall kind of a thing. So it's interesting you say that because I have an app on my phone and I'm not plugging for them, but it used to be called Carrot and it was taken over by Bitcoin Magazine. And if if you read the stories that are in here, you earn Oh man, yeah, there we go. Yeah, that's yeah, fine. Earn with every Bitcoin that you when you read, you earn Bitcoin for <laughs> reading that. the Bitcoin news. I'm a prognosticator, ladies and gentlemen. I'm a prognosticator. I had no clue that that even existed. I just made that stuff up. <laughs> so, but, but like, this is a new phone, so that's why it's not set up <laughs> because I typically read a lot of it on there. Um, but I've been reading it through their web interface, which you don't get paid, by the way. You have to do it through the mobile app. Um, oh, okay. But, yeah, it, 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 I definitely think it's going that way. All righty, dude. We've rambled long enough. Thanks for another great week. And, hey, man, uh, we'll see you same, same time next week, man. Same bat time, same bat channel. I left that to you. I'll talk pow, to you soon. Pow, pow.